planting myself in a lot of relationships and not being present. And that's why things were happening um, kind of uh, w- w- like off off my radar all the time. And I wasn't clocking it until it was too late or I was afraid in the moment. I was afraid in the moment to set boundaries. I always looked at boundary setting as like uh, clingy or bitchy or all of these different things. When in reality, I never realized that setting boundaries was actually a whole, uh, uh, it was me. It was wholly, yeah. me, you know, and it's like, you're you being were saying, too polite. Like just even not realizing that you need boundaries. Like, um, I don't want to ask him to stop fucking my sister. Cause I don't want him to think, um, I mean, uh, you know yeah so it was it was that um and safety was a big thing and it's safety in a lot of different i mean on the surface level it was like i needed physical safety obviously that was a no-brainer but i learned that i was like i want someone that like emotional safety right right and stuff like that um and also too all this shit comes down to what you were saying earlier too like not loving yourself like it's so cliche and mainstream media makes it so like Love yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like, fuck that noise. That's not it. It's not yeah, it. It's like yeah. really, truly like knowing what you deserve and stopping at nothing to get it. Because yeah. so many of these things that we let slide in these relationships comes from some voice somewhere inside saying, I deserve it. Now, or, here's, a, here's a, a question for you. Um, your parents and the stuff, uh, like why, where did you, how did that manifest itself from your from your relationship with your parents, are you your, is your dad still around? Your mom around? Were they together? What what's that look like? You know what's interesting? I I they're together. They're together for fifty years. They've been together for fifty years. They're going to have their forty sixth wedding anniversary this Monday. Um, they're very traditional, very monogamous, very you know. So um, I I grapple with I think looking at their traditional love model and finding ways to adapt it in a very non-traditional dating setting now in 2021, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because my parents are a lot older than me. So I right, think right. what I was raised with still exists, but I've needed to kind of like, okay, how do I take the values that they instilled in me and apply them now in 2021 as well? But, you know, another thing that I learned is it was less about my parents and it was more about like my upbringing and just like random kind of, not I don't want to go as far as to say traumatizing experiences with men, but this, if I were to give my parents anything or blame them for anything, they, this wasn't talked about a lot. Like, so I was kind of left to kind of go out there and determine, I knew I should be respected. I knew that I should have a healthy relationship full of trust and all of these values. Like I looked at them and stuff like that, but I kind of like, I feel like there was a distance But, you know, we didn't have, like, intimate discussion about, like, okay, what do you really want a partner to look like? Like, it was just, like, well, he should respect you and he should have a good job and a good relationship with his family. But it's, like, that kind of shit, like, when I went out into the wild and started hooking up. standard. Like, that's not that's not a request. It's like, going, what do you want in a car? Well, it should have four wheels. I mean, it should have an engine, ideally. Correct. Correct. So, so many of these years I spent floundering and loving and loving and investing in men that like treated me really badly and having these like kind of traumatic experiences because I was looking for this, this thing that I was distant from. Oh, he should respect me, have a good job, have a good relationship with his family. But it took a lot of stumbling and falling down to find like, okay, no, like really what kind of a man do you want? Like, you know, like, what do you want? What are you going to stand for? Yeah. And then, and then you got to the other part of that that's difficult is you got to really be uh, you got to be honest with that. You got to be honest with that, even when it may be untraditional. So, you know, um, what, what's your what, what's your nationality? Like, where are your people from? I'm Italian. OK. Right. Uh, how many generations out of immigrant, you know, immigration? Second immig- second oh, wow. Yeah. My mom and my dad were born here, but my grandparents onward were all. Born and raised in Italy and then eventually immigrated. Wow, that's, I mean, you know, so here's a, something that I found to be true because I do the one-on-one consultations and stuff. And what I find is a lot of pe- kid children from immigrant parents because their whole point of coming here was survival. So there's mm-hmm. never this, re- and, and look, I, I mean, you don't even know, like, I don't even know if you know whether or not your mom and dad is happy. Not to say that they're not or they aren't, but I'm saying that's just not something that was a priority. It's survival, you know? 
it's co-parenting. It's building a life together. I mean, you took the words right out of my, literally before you asked, I was about to be like, listen, I'm a second generation Italian woman and like Italian women are, I see it in my family are known to be very submissive and that their role here is very, it's traditional to a fault. If there's infidelity, if there's pain, if there's anything, it's like, it doesn't matter. You stick it out. You hold the family together. So to your point, that's what I think was missing from my upbringing from my parents. I was never taught or given that space for what makes Brittany happy? Right. What makes what, what you know? What does happiness look like romantically? Mm-hmm. I was just I was taught that romantic happiness, quote unquote, was it's together, just being together. Being together, you're yeah. just together, and you stay together no matter what for the mm-hmm. kids, for the family. You make mm-hmm. it work. He cheats, doesn't matter. You know what happens. You just slide it under the rug. All of these things that are not. Yeah. And you're right. Like, it's like, I love my parents to death. Like, listen, they are a unit. I admire what they've built together. Sure, sure. Very- well, I mean, you, the geniuses of today stand on the shoulders of the genius of yesterday. So you wouldn't even be able to actualize what, what you're, what you, and I mean, you're still exploring this idea of self-fulfillment, self-fulfillment and happiness. But if you didn't, you know, you, you, you don't give a fuck about that when you're hungry. You know, when there's no roof over your head, you don't have time for self-fulfillment. I really want to try pottery. You know, I like it. It's just, you don't have, yeah, you don't even have that. And that's so funny because we we get into arguments on like my mom goes, why is your dating life so complicated? And I'm like, because I think that yours was so simple. That's why you think it's so complicated. I was like, you just weren't considering the things that I'm considering today when you yeah. and dad picked each other or when right. you and do they seem grandma. happy together? At least do you get the idea that they're happy or do you get the idea that they're roommates? <laughs> like a lot of immigrant parents. They a little bit of both. I think a uh, yeah. bit of both. that's roommates. Yeah. That's they're mostly great. roommates. Yeah. I think they want a contentment and they have it. And then I also think, and it's, it's fun. I love what I live with them now. Thanks to the pandemic. And I think it's fun to watch, watch two people deeply, <laughs> We know each other and also be so fucking annoyed with each other. <laughs> is, it, is it weird it's to live to be yeah. back with them? Because uh, I just uh, I can't believe I'm going to tell this story, but I got it. <laughs> I just found condoms in the wastebasket. My dad's condoms in the wastebaskets, and they're magnums. So fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if like I, I don't know why that Magnum's bothers me. Magnum's on Magnum be... XL. Mm, come on now, we come know on, the man. difference. Listen, why you always gotta cuck somebody, Dante? <laughs> and, and enough that my dad's got a big prick that we can't can't we just enjoy that it runs in the, the family. Big giant Armenian prick. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, school two o two. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.